In today's episode of the podcast, I have some recently finished objects, a couple works in progress I want to chat about. And then at the end of the episode, I'm going to share with you a big bundle of Patton's Quarry Sock Yarn I just picked up on Amazon in so many fun colors that I can't wait to share with you. So if that sounds like just your cup of tea, get cozy and let's dive in. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor, and this is Elizabeth Zimmerhen, and for today, we will be your hosts. Now, I'm going to set Elizabeth back over here. She can watch from back here, and I will chat more about her a little bit later on. But in the meantime, before we dive into all of the knitting content I have for you guys today, I want to remind you that if you are into cozy knitting content, you've come to the right place. Definitely don't forget to hit the like button and be sure to subscribe for all of the future content I post twice a week with an occasional fun video thrown in in between. And if you'd like additional content from yours truly, head over to Patreon. The link is down below in the description box. It's a great way to support the channel and there's lots of additional content over there as well. I also want to encourage you to sign up for the Wool Needles Hands newsletter. You can do that by heading over to woolneedleshands.com. The newsletter sign up is down at the bottom of any page. Those folks signed up for the newsletter will get a monthly recap of my month where I share favorite patterns, things I've worked on, bits and bobs like that. And while you're over there, if you have suggestions for future midweek ramble episodes, which come out every Wednesday, you can drop me a line over in the tip line. As many of you know, I am the owner and dyer of Fiber for the People yarn, and there's a shop update coming not this one, Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, April 3rd, and it's going to be inspired by this really gorgeous photo that I took of my boys on our recent trip to San Francisco in the Bay Area. This is actually a mural that was painted on the wall of a really old building on Telegraph Avenue in Berkeley, and I think it's gorgeous. And I pulled some pretty colors out of that mural, and I'm going to make that the collection coming to the shop next Wednesday, which will be dyed on the 100% Nevada born raised Merino Rambouillet yarn that is exclusive to Fiber for the People. So to keep posted about that, definitely sign up for the Fiber for the People newsletter. That's where I provide all information regarding future shop updates. I don't share any of that on Instagram. So if you want to know more about Fiber for the People shop updates and be in the loop so you don't miss an update, definitely sign up for that newsletter. All the important links are down below. Okay, now that that is all out of the way, let's get a little bit of an update of where I was, not last week, because if you've been watching the channel for the last week, I was here Wednesday for the midweek ramble. But before that, I took a week off, so you didn't see any content from me. And that's because my family and I took a vacation up the Pacific coast to the Bay Area. We drove straight out from Las Vegas, essentially where we are, Henderson, Las Vegas, straight out to the coast in Morro Bay. And then we went up the coast highway until we couldn't go any further because of a recent landslide in the Big Sur area, but eventually made our way to the Bay Area and to Berkeley where we had an Airbnb. We decided to stay in Berkeley because I love that city and then do our visit into San Francisco from there. And it was beautiful. The kids had a great time. It was the perfect time of year to go. It was not crowded. The weather was really great. We were worried it was going to rain, um, but we didn't really get any rain during the day. It rained overnight one of the nights that we were there. But other than that, the weather was gorgeous. We did some hiking in the Berkeley area, did some of the touristy stuff in San Francisco, went to Alcatraz. And then on our way back down the coast, um, we headed towards Monterey. We went to San Jose and did the Winchester Mystery House, uh, walked around Cannery Row, let the kids go play kind of in the waves a little bit right there in Cannery Row where we ate dinner. And it was just, it was a lot of fun. All right, we are at dinner at the Fish Hopper in Monterey. This is our view. In the bay, right down from our table. People digging around in the sand. It's a beautiful day. A really great muchly needed vacation for the family. So that was where I was, not this last week, but the week before. And in that time, I would like to say that I got so much knitting done. But I really didn't get a ton done, but I finished a project that I had really been wanting to get off the needles. And I'm going to talk to you guys about that today. It was like really the only project I worked on during our vacation to the Bay Area. Um, so I'm going to share that with you today. Actually, no, I finished I finished two things, if you include Elizabeth over there. So yeah, let's, um, let's go ahead and dive into it. Oh, before I get started, I'm having coffee today. Um, just a basic light roast coffee, but I'm having it in this really awesome coffee mug that I picked up while we were in San Francisco. We got this at this little shop on Haight Street. Um, and it's, I love it. Isn't It's Harry Styles and he's 
telling everybody to treat people with kindness. What's not to like about that? Okay, let's go ahead and get into it. The first, I'm gonna turn it so you can see it. The first project I finished recently, and I'm really excited about these. They have been, I blocked these uh, socks that I knit for my husband, Brandon. I blocked them so they look really nice, but I did not use sock blockers. I'll actually show you a picture here of how I blocked these. I soaked them with a little bit of wool wash. I use Euclid wool wash, it's my favorite. But I soaked them and then I spun them in my spin dryer. You can use a salad spinner if you don't have a spin dryer. A salad spinner works like a dream for a pair of socks. And then I just kind of shaped them and laid them out flat on a cookie, uh, like a drying rack and left them like that. I was a little afraid to use um, my sock blockers. Number one, I couldn't use my sock blockers. My husband is six foot five and he has a size 13 and a half bordering and a size 14 foot. And so I don't have a pair of sock blockers for that. And I have a family set of sock blockers, excuse me, that comes with like a, a big, like a really big, uh, like medium big and then a little. And even the really big didn't fit him. So I couldn't have used them if I wanted to, but I didn't want to. Because if you've been watching me talk about blocking socks recently, I feel like when you block socks on a sock blocker, it causes the like this to block out like this instead of coming in a little bit as it should. You want that to be nice and elastic and you don't want it to kind of become stretched out. And I feel like that's what sock blockers do whenever I block my socks on them. So I didn't want to do that here. So I just shaped them, laid them out and look how lovely they look. So pretty. Yeah, loving that. And I have two because he has two feet, wouldn't you know? Yeah, they came out so great and I'm really, really happy with them. So let's go ahead and talk about the toe because you'll notice that the toe is not matching the rest of the sock and that wasn't my initial plan. What happened was, believe it or not, I ran out of yarn and that is because my husband has giant feet. So, and, and guys, listen, I'm, this isn't any kind of like derogatory comment towards people with really big feet. I just, relative to my own and everybody else in this family, um, his feet are the biggest. And so I, you know, he's look, just look guys. I pretty much knit a sleeve, okay? Like if I put this here, this is, this is a sleeve, all right? So the, the from the top of his sock all the way down to the toe is almost the length of my entire arm minus my hand, okay? So they're big. I. I had two separate balls of Patton's Croy sock yarn, one for each sock, and it wasn't enough for my husband's foot um, with the ankle being the length that it is. And I really do feel, there, okay, and I really do feel like this is an ideal length of leg for him. It It's, I don't know, it just kind of gets to that point on his leg where you can be sure it's not going to come poking out of like pants, if he like crosses his legs and his pant leg hikes up, you're not gonna see his skin. Like it'll cover, give him the coverage that he needs. And with that consideration, I didn't have enough yarn with a whole ball of Patton's Croy, which is great to know because I do plan on knitting this length of leg for him in the future with that yarn. And now I know I need to have two balls of that, one for each foot, and then I need to have at least one additional ball in a contrasting color to accommodate whatever I'm gonna run out of. And that's what I have here. So this is just a plain cream color Patton's Croy sock yarn. It's the colorway muslin. And it's actually so pretty with this striped yarn. I wasn't sure how I was gonna like it, but I didn't want to get I didn't want to try to match up one of these other colors with a solid color. Like I didn't want to try to get a red or a navy because I just knew it wouldn't be close enough and it might look kind of off. So I went for something that was just so different from everything here, something very stark in terms of contrast. And this muslin was really perfect. And I feel like it's just meant to be like it looks fantastic. I think um, I think it would also look great if I had the heel in that color as well. I'm not a big fan of cuffs, heels, and toes, but I do like uh, heels and toes. So anyway, that's my husband's socks. They are finished. They took me a minute to get them done, but this is all I worked on while we were in the Bay Area and driving up. This was all I worked on and I knocked them out and I'm in love with them. And I can actually give them to him now. He can wear them if he'd like. I've been holding them folded nicely in here on my table until I could show them to you guys. I didn't want them to get, I don't know, dirty and 
flattened out or whatever. So my husband's socks, finished and finished. If you're interested, um, I knit him a 72 stitch sock. So it's a size one needle, 72 stitches, knit one pearl, one rib for about two inches, stockinette stitch, you know, the whole shebang. I put a link to the kind of formula that I use for my socks down below in the description box, but this is a 72 stitch sock. And I knit the length of the foot to 10 and a half inches before I knit the toe, just so you kind of have an idea. But yeah, love these. What is even the way that I just folded this? Look what I just did, who does that? So that is my socks for Brandon and they are done. There's sticker residue on the bottom of my mug. And so when I pick up my mug, I pick up my coaster. Oh, there it goes. All right. This is Elizabeth Zimmerhen. As I mentioned, she is my emotional support chicken and she is finished. She, I gotta, hold on. Let me just make sure she's ready to go. Make sure she's all puffed and squished and fluffed. There she is. Look at her guys. Just look at her. Isn't she just the cutest thing? Isn't she just so sassy? Come on. Golly. She is so cute, you guys. I um I never thought I would knit something like this. Honestly, I'm still kind of in shock that I I actually knit myself a chicken. But this is so stinking adorable. And it's the perfect little like um kind of support pillow or bolster, you know, like having something that you can kind of tuck while you're laying on the couch. It, it really is, it fits under your arm and you can kind of just hold her like this. And it's so nice. This is how you would hold a chicken, okay? So like if you got an actual chicken and I've held chickens before, so I know this, this kind of stuff, but when you get a chicken, you hold them like this and you kind of let her, their, like the breast of the chicken kind of rest in your arm like this. And they sit there, you know, and you know, they look at you and they make noise. They have this like little purring noise that they make, um, which is really quite pleasant. She doesn't make any noise. She's quiet, the quiet type. But look at how cute she is. Look how emotionally supportive she is. I love her so much. Her little comb and waddle. Yeah. Okay. So now let's get down to business in terms of the details here. I knit this using leftover yarn from two sweaters. I had mentioned uh, when I first talked about this that the tan color that you see here was from my stripe pipe pullover. This is not from my stripe pipe. This is from my most recent Franken sweater. So this is Patton's Classic Worsted in the natural mix colorway. And then the mustard color that you see or the brown that you see here is from my stripe pipe pullover. And that is called Mustard Brown by Patton's or Patton's Classic Worsted. And so that's what I'm using here. So both yarns are Peyton's Classic Wool Worsted um, in those two colors. The red, however, this, what is this? This is from Anchor. So hold on, let me get you an example of what that is, just a moment. I'm not gonna show you the actual color because I don't have any more of it left. Well, I do, but I don't know where it is, but I wanted to show this to you. So this is um, Tapestry Wool. And I picked a bunch of these up at Michael's a while ago. It's by the company Anchor and it's just tapestry wool. And it's great because it's these tiny little quantities. How much is this? 10.9 yards, 10 meters. Okay, so it's 10 meters. It's, it's exactly, I mean, it's a little bit more than what you need for this project for the little details, but that's what I used for the comb and the waddling hello. How, hello, um, this is this video is gonna go off the rails. I'm sorry, it's just, I have a chicken here that I made. So so yeah, that's what that is. The yellow, however, that is Knit Picks. Um, oh gosh, what is it? Stroll Worsted, just whatever their basic superwash wool worsted is because I had some of that and I really liked that particular yellow. Um, so yeah, there's that. And then the eyeballs are little safety eyes that I got on Amazon. And you know, I wasn't sure. So when I got the safety eyes, I didn't figure out how, the, you know, how to use them before I got to the point of actually needing to use them. So I kind of had to like, as I'm, okay, I got to attach this somehow. I had to teach myself how these things work. And it's really simple. Let me show you what I discovered. Okay. So these safety eyes, I don't know why they're called safety eyes. I've heard that it has something to do with little children um, getting them in their mouths and pulling them off. And these are supposed to 
make it so that they don't do that. Honestly, um, if the kid's chewing on that enough and pulling hard enough, like it's going to pull it off. I don't, I don't really know how the safety factor, but I, they come like this. They come with this, like, it looks like a little screw. Okay, so you have like the eye, you see here, and then it has the threaded part here. You insert this into the fabric. We're gonna put an eyeball on my granny square here. So you would just like insert the eye right into the middle of my granny square. <laughs> I'm gonna start putting eyeballs on everything. Like that, okay? And then you take this, this guy, little back, over the top and you just push it hold on just, you just push it <laughs> on there <laughs> this is the weirdest looking granny square <laughs> oh god it's so creepy <laughs> i'm sorry i'm imagining a blanket of granny squares <laughs> with eyeballs in the middle of each one somebody needs to make that a thing because that is the creepiest thing i've seen okay somebody somebody Design the eyeball blanket. Design it. You don't have to pay me. You can have that idea. Just maybe like put a mention to this video down in the doobly-doo of that pattern, but you need to do it. Whoever you are out there watching this video, you are thinking about it. You you can buy on Amazon. There's how many of these safety eyes? I don't know. It doesn't say, but I, a lot. Make a blanket. Eyeball in every single one. It'll be the least comfortable blanket in existence and the most awkward and weird somebody's gonna want it. Okay, so anyway, that's how that works. This is the backside. You, it, I mean, it's really hard <laughs> to get it off. So that, I have to assume that's why, because I don't know how. This, this particular, this is gonna always have an eyeball. That is my emotional support chicken. Love it. So I, I encourage you to do it. If you're on the fence about knitting one of these, just do it because it is so, lo I love it. I love it. <laughs> so nice even the kids love it and Ronan who uh, my youngest who's not really into fuzzy yarn and this you know this is this has got some tooth to it he likes it so yeah it's very cute the little comb and the waddle when it came to attaching them and also the sewing together of the pieces was very much a fly by the seat of my pants I don't like seaming pieces together this was definitely a reminder um, as to why I don't like to knit seamed garments or I don't want to knit seamed garments because having to, if I had to make that perfect, I would have lost my mind. I just managed to bring the two pieces together and stitch them closed in a way that was, you know, somewhat decent. So yeah, there is that. And I feel like I did a pretty good job. So there she is. I stuffed her with wool stuffing. I didn't want to use polyfill or whatever that is because I wanted the whole thing to be wooly. I wanted everything from start to finish to be wooly. Um, somebody mentioned like, well, how are you going to clean that? I don't really plan on like throwing this in the washing machine. Um, if it gets so dirty, maybe like I could soak it. And yeah, I mean, the wool on the inside, I really don't know how that's going to work. That's kind of a bridge I guess I'll cross when I get to it. Hopefully I don't get to it. But um, yeah, that's what I did. I used wool stuffing. I'll link to the kind that I used um, down in the description. But it's just this really lovely, soft wool stuffing. I have it. I'll be back. Okay, <clears throat> it's this. It comes in a bag like this. There it is, right there. <laughs> this bag. Um, I bought one of these to stuff one chicken. I think I have enough here to stuff four chickens because as you pull it out, it just grows and grows and grows um, and expands. But there it is. All wool stuffing. Yeah, it's lovely. So there's that. That is what I used to stuff Elizabeth Zimmerhen. And she, she's lovely. She's real sophisticated when you look at her like this. She's a chicken, okay? She's a sophisticated lady. But then, you know, you look at her like this, and she really kind of shows, you know, she's not always sophisticated. She's got some wonky eyeballs, but she is just precious. Okay, we got to move on. Jeez. Okay, let's move on to some works in progress. And I want to start this by sharing with you something I purchased. I didn't make this. Something I purchased before our trip to San Francisco. We were at the Nordstrom Rack. No, not the Nordstrom Rack. Nordstrom Rack. It's kind of like um, Nordstrom, but the like off, what do they call that? Like discounted stuff? I don't know. Sometimes I see things in there that I don't even know why they're there. This is a hood. See it? 
this is a kind of like it has the cowl at the bottom down here and then this part is the hood now you've probably seen these in like the hot right now on Ravelry um, there are a few patterns two in which that I, I really like and I'll share those in a minute but there are a few patterns for really cute hoods like this that go over your neck and then they have like the little hoodie part so you can wear them under a coat without having to wear like an entire hoodie it just provides that a little bit of additional warmth if you're in you know an area where you might need it and so i thought this would be perfect for san francisco because i thought if it wasn't going to be raining it would at least be kind of damp and cold and i wanted just a little extra something without having to always be wearing a big like sweater or i don't know whatever i just wanted something a little bit additional and I didn't go to Nordstrom Rack thinking like, I'm gonna go find myself a hood because this is X, Y, and Z. It's I found this and then I justified buying it with all of those reasons I just shared with you. Now I'm realizing it was very much me just justifying purchasing this because it's real nice. But I really did enjoy having it. It got, it got lots of wear. I wore it every single time we went out. All right, we are here, Alcatraz, for the evening tour. Kids, the family are catching up back there. And I loved it. It is by the company, I don't know if you're familiar, Portolano. So Portolano is a company based in, I wanna say they're from Italy, but they make items out of alpaca, cashmere, merino, like the like sheep's wool, fine, fine um, fleece fibers. This is 100% cashmere and it's fine, fine, cashmere with no pilling issues it's you can tell it's a long staple cashmere but the quality of their items is exceptional and you know it's just i love it it was the only one left it was clearanced um i had to jump on it because i absolutely love it and i didn't have anything like this so i i had never had a hood in my accessory wardrobe and i just felt like it was the perfect piece to have okay so i take it to san francisco I wear it all the time. It's in every, almost every picture of me while we're there, I have this on. We go to Alcatraz. We come back from Alcatraz at night and I wear it because it was really cold. I wear it over my head and it was so cozy and it looks really chic. I'm not gonna put it on and put it over my head. It would really throw things off here, but you gotta take my word for it. I love this thing. So all of this is to say a hood is an excellent item to seek out in terms of patterns or knitting patterns to add to your accessories wardrobe because it really does come in handy, especially traveling, having something like that you can throw in your suitcase. Okay, I think you get the picture. So I get home, as much as I love this, I realized like this is very much something I could knit and I wanted to knit myself almost the same exact thing, like down to the color and everything. And I know it seems like, well, why would you do that? Why would you make exactly the same thing or at least something that resembles so closely something you already own? I don't have an answer for you. All I know is I had the yarn in my stash and an idea. And the yarn in my stash I wanted to use for this was very similar in terms of color. So this is what I have so far. That was a long story just to tell you that I am knitting a hood right now and I'm really excited about it. So this is all I have so far. I am currently knitting what would be the cowl section. Look at this gorgeous color. It is a mohair pairing here. I have uh, two, two skeins of yarn. Both are fiber for the people yarn, which is my hand dyed yarn. This is merino alpaca silk in the fleece colorway. And this is kid mohair silk in that same fleece colorway. And this yarn I actually just finished using on my recent Franken sweater knit. The Franken sweater is a really lovely pattern by yours truly. You, it's out now on Ravelry. But this is what I used to make the second sample of that sweater. And then this is something I have yet to use and I've been wanting to use it. And this is a great place to use it because it's so lovely and soft. It has fantastic drape. And the two of these together is just something straight out of heaven itself. And I love it. So this is what I have so far. It's just this. It has a rolled edge. I didn't do any ribbing here because I wanted to sort of, I swear it's gonna rain. How lovely. I wanted to sort of replicate the raw looking edge at the bottom of this one. You can kind of see that here. And so I wanted to go with a nice rolled edge. I know it's gonna roll a bit, but I really love that look around the neck as kind of like the base of the cowl here. And I'm going to knit 
about this distance here, which is seven inches. I've mapped this all out. I have a sketch of it. So I'm going to knit my cowl for seven inches and then I'm going to create a hood. Um, and I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I'm going to figure it out. Now, the reason I'm kind of improvising this as I go is because the two patterns that I was looking at, what is it? One's the Harris hood. Yeah. So one is the Harris hood by um, hmm, Coco Amore, I want to say. What is her name? So we have the Harris hood, Cheryl Mokhtari, which I think she's Coco Amore knitwear. And then, and I love that one. That one's beautiful. Highly recommend that one based on looks alone. And then the Bonbeck which is a design by Emily Lewis, which I love as well. The only thing is neither of those options was exactly what I wanted now. I, I like the Harris the most. I like the Bonbeck for its simplicity, but I don't want drawstrings. Um, and I know you can just knit the Bonbeck and take off that section of the drawstrings and you're done. But I wanted, I wanted this. And I figured instead of just scouring Ravelry for every element that I want all in one place, I was just going to come up with something on my own. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna go about doing that. I have a feeling I'm going to kind of look at both of those patterns I mentioned, get an idea of how they created that hood and pull bits and pieces from each of those patterns um, to create kind of what I'm going for here and turn this into somewhat of like a Franken hood, if you will. I don't know, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm really excited to have that as something I can add to my hand knit accessories wardrobe and I'm loving it. I think I want to dive down like the hood rabbit hole for like a pattern rundown video in the future. Let me know if you're into that idea because I think that it's an accessory that I don't want to say it's under underrated, um, but I just don't think a lot of people are considering hoods um, and, and they ought to. I don't know. I think it's, it's it was a great accessory to have on hand, I will tell you. Okay, now I know a lot of you are wondering where I'm at with my stripey tee. Um, I'm going to share it with you and I'm going to give you some kind of notes, some thoughts I have on this. Um, and then we're going to move on because I haven't made a lot of progress. So this is my stripy tee. If you've been watching for a while, you're familiar with my little black tee. This is a pattern I'm in the process of having test knit. Um, I just finished it. Well, I didn't just finish it. It's been tech edited and now it is just getting started being test knit. Not this, but the one that you see in this photo. And I had casted this one on as a sort of second sample of that one. And I wanted it to be, you know, a little bit longer sleeves. And I was going to incorporate these stripes because I didn't have enough of one of these colors to complete the whole uh, project and all of this. Well, I love what I have going on here. I really do. I love the sleeves. I love the stripes. I'm liking the fit so far. I haven't shared any fit photos yet. Um, I will. I just... I had to kind of set this, I had to set this aside for a while um, as I was getting things ready for the test knit for the little black tee. Um, but I had made comments about how I was going to incorporate this variation into the little black tee pattern that I'm working on right now or that's being test knit. And I'm going to tell you that's not going to happen. I'm not going to incorporate these variations into that pattern. And I have my reasons for that. Um, for example, the way that the increases work here along the raglan, there is a pearl bump in between each of the raglan increases that give it a little bit of a, I don't know, just kind of a more visible seam, if you will. But I don't love the way it works with the stripes. I don't like the way it feels to knit that little situation with the stripes when you change colors in that area. It just isn't very clean. I don't love it. I feel like it looks fine. It's fine here. And when it blocks out, I think it'll look nice. It's the process I really don't love. Um, and I know that stripes are definitely optional. You don't have to knit the stripes in there. But if I were to design something with stripes, I would want every aspect of it to be, you know, um, I don't know, to complement the striping. And I don't feel like that method of increasing complements the process of knitting the stripes. I don't enjoy it. It doesn't look as clean as I would like it to look. So there's that. The length of the sleeves here, 
in my opinion, because it hits down to kind of the crook of your elbow, means that the overall sweater, the body of the sweater, needs to be a little bit longer than what you see in the little black tee. The little black tee is designed to be somewhat cropped. Of course, you can knit that length to whatever you want, but in terms of my design, it's intended to be somewhat cropped, like you see it. It's supposed to come right to the top of your pants. This, because of the length of these sleeves, I don't imagine that the that length of the body looking as nice with this length of sleeve. I don't know what it is. I don't think the proportions would be as visually appealing and attractive as they are with a little black tee. So that would be something I would want to change. And what I'm finding here is as I'm doing this, all the little things I would change with this would turn it into something different. Um, it would no longer be the little black tee like you see it in this picture. It would be something else. It would be the, the stripey tee or something. And, um, and there's that. So when it comes to the variations that you see here, I'm not going to be including them in the little black tee pattern. Um, what you get with the little black tee pattern is what you see in the photo. You will get a pattern to knit that garment. Now you can at that point modify the garment to make it however you want it to be. You can stripe it, you can make the sleeves longer, you can make the body longer, you can do whatever you want. Um, but for in terms of me releasing a pattern, that's just going to be that. And this may or may not become a pattern. Um, I kind of want to pump the brakes on writing patterns and going through all that right now. I did it with the Franken sweater. I'm doing it with a little black tee and I feel like I'm kind of, <laughs> I, I just need to step back a little bit because I didn't, I started 2024 20, as like a knitwear designer almost. And I, I just kind of want to slow my roll just a bit. And so I don't know what is going to become of this, but for right now, what is going to become of this is a, a top that I'm knitting for myself and I'll share, you know, kind of what I did. And, and that's that. So this is my little black or my little striped tee or whatever you want to call this. It's just a improvised or not improvised. It's just a design I'm coming up with on my own for a really cute stripey crew neck t-shirt, if you will. And I love it. It's as I've been, you know, as it's been growing, it's gotten heavy. This is a 55%. Is it 55, 40? What is it? I never know, I can never remember. Yeah, it's a 55% extra fine merino wool, 45% cotton. It's by the company About Strings. You can purchase this yarn on Amazon. I know it's been hard to come by. People are saying it's because I've been mentioning it here, so now you can't get your hands on it. Maybe that's the case. I love this yarn. It's a gorgeous merino cotton blend. It's a DK weight, it's fabulous. I'll link to it down below. It may or may not be available, but I will link to it. But it does have heft. So this will be, you know, a drapey and hefty garment when it's finished. Um, but I really do love it. Right now, I'm just finishing the body. I have quite a ways to go. I want to say I have about three and a half inches left. And the rest of it will be knit in this gray color to kind of, you know, mimic the, the gray that we have. Like there's a large gap of gray here and a large gap of gray here. And then there will be a large gap of gray at the bottom for the hem. So that is where I'm at with that. So not exactly sure if we can still call this the little stripey tee. I guess I can do what I want, but that's that. And it's uh, it's coming along. I've, I've slowed down a little bit um, just because, I don't know, I just didn't know where I was going with it. I didn't know if it was going to become a sample for, you know, the little black tee or whatever. But now I'm kind of of the impression that it's just its own thing. And, and that's... That's completely okay. Okay, the last thing I wanted to share with you guys, and I, I forgot that I have it over here. In this little basket, this, this is a sewing basket that belonged to my grandma. Um, look how cute this is. It's like a bushel basket for apples with all these really cute felt things on the side. So cute. But in this, I have stuffed a bunch of Patton's Croy sock yarn and then a couple of skeins of not Patton's Croy sock yarn. And I just wanted to kind of share with you what I got. Nothing like, nothing crazy. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. I don't know how, I mean, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pairs of socks, eight, nine pairs of socks. I would have to knit to use up all this yarn. But what's the harm in, in sharing this with you? So this is my basket of Patton's classic, no, Patton's Croy sock yarn. I purchased all of this on Amazon. And the reason I did that is because you can get colors that you can't get in the store 
on Amazon. Like you have access to such a wide range of their colorway collection that you it pays to just check Amazon because I can't find any of those colors available in, you know, at Joanne or Michaels or anything. And so I shopped Amazon for this. And when I did that, I purchased it through this is this is how it comes. They come in sets of two. And I want to open this because I want to tell you the little store on Amazon where I got it. So when you purchase it, you're getting two per set. If you're purchasing from the link that I provide down in the description, it is a two twofer. Um, let's see. Okay, so I'll set that off to here, the side. Okay, so it comes two of these. I'm going to talk about the colors in just a second. But it comes from a company called Bella's Crafts. And each little two pack comes with these little interlocking uh, stitch markers, which I love. So Bella's Crafts, Rex, North Carolina, but that's the company that sends these out. So that's the, comp the Amazon store, if you will. So each one comes with those and two Patton's Croy sock yarns. And I was having so much fun looking through the different colors that I bought a bunch to share with you guys. Um, I bought these with all my own money. So this isn't, I'm not sponsored by Peyton's or Patton's. Um, I just love them. I feel like this is some of the best sock yarn you can get, especially if you're on a budget, but that the budget doesn't even matter. It's just really good quality sock yarn. It's 75% washable wool and 25% nylon. But you know, this says, this says 75% wool. It does not say washable wool. Oh, no, but it says that, okay, it says wash in water, not exceeding 86 degrees Fahrenheit, 30 degrees Celsius at the delicate setting. Do not bleach, tumble dry at low heat at the delicate setting. Okay, it doesn't say that it's washable wool, but the fact that it's telling you you can tumble it dry suggests to me that it must be washable but it is 75% wool, 25% nylon, and it's really fantastic. That's what I used to make these, and you can just tell by feeling them that they're workhorse yarns, and those are gonna be workhorse socks. So let's talk about the colors that I found, and I love them. So this is one that is called Mexicali Stripes. Oh my goodness. It's got like a little, um, it has a motif to it when you knit it. It's not just straight up stripes. There's some little details going on there. So that's what those are. And then I got this one. Um, this one I actually picked up at Joanne the other day because uh, they had it. And I think it's so pretty. It's very subtle. It's called Seashell Colors. Very, very subtle. And I was thinking this would be a really fun color, especially because I only have one here, for a cute pair of shorty socks for the summer. How pretty is that? So subtle. So there's that one. And then, oh, I love this one. So this is one of them that I got in the two for deal. These are sidewalk chalk stripes. Oh, guys, don't you love it? Like those dusty colors. Sidewalk chalk stripes. And then this one. I was, I was keeping myself and I was keeping Brandon in mind and even my dad because he loves these kinds of these hand knit socks. This is called Adrift. And what I love about this is it has gorgeous blues, but there's a surprising warm color in there. And I feel like when it comes to creating colorway collections or color palettes, having some nice cool tones with like maybe one pop of warmth is something really pleasing to the eye. So this is called Adrift. Lots of really pretty cool tones in there. And then that one brown, like caramel brown color. So pretty. It's more like a mochaccino color. Love that. So that's called Adrift. I'll link to all these below. This one is called Midnight Orchid. Love that. What I love about this one is that little stripe of chartreuse that's in there. That's really pretty. Like that. And then this one, Greener Pastures. This is another one that has kind of like a design to it. It knits up with a little bit of a design. These would be fun for Brandon. They're kind of like, it's got like Golden Knights colors in there, the Vegas Golden Knights, the hockey team, but it also has green. Um, so it's his favorite color, so it's like both. So these will definitely be a pair of socks for Brandon. Yeah, Greener Pastures. 
Doo -doo -doo. Oh, and then the last one of the patents, Corey, that I have. This one I think is called Mid-Century Stripes. Yep, Mid-Century Stripes. Oh my gosh, I love it. Same kind of thing going on here. Lots of warm colors interrupted by a really lovely kind of blue denim color, something cool. So pretty, you guys. Okay, now before I had purchased those, I had made another order for some sock yarn. I don't need sock yarn. I can't knit socks. I, this this is enough. Like if I have to, if I buy any more sock yarn, um, we have probably a problem. Um, but I had purchased a couple of skeins of self-striping sock yarn from Tiny Human Knits. So she has quickly become one of my favorite self-striping sock dyers, um, sock yarn dyers. I love nomadic yarns. She's fantastic. That's Ashley Aguilar. Um, but Tiny Human Knits, she has such an eye for color combinations. I love it. So I purchased a couple. So this one is M Muka. Muka? Fruits DK. Muka Fruits DK. It's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Um, I mentioned in a recent video about knitting socks that you really should try to find a yarn that's not merino. But, and, and it's true, okay? Like, it, merino's not the best wool um, for socks. It's just not. It's so fine, so soft. However, if you are going to use merino, because it's everywhere, it's one of the most prevalent types of yarn out there when it comes to like indie dyed yarn. Um, something that's 75%, 25% nylon is good because it has a lot of that durability in there with the nylon. So that's why I went with this. Also because it's gorgeous. I really was going for the color more than anything else, you know, as you do. So this is Muka Fruits DK. It's a sock set. How pretty is this? So gorgeous. It's DK weight sock set, which I love that. Nothing like a good set of DK weight socks. And then this one, I didn't understand the reference when I purchased this. It was just, there was one left and I loved the color combination, but this is 1989. Um, and it's for a, it's a half amount. So it would be for like a shorty set of socks, but it's in reference to a Taylor Swift album cover that I just wasn't familiar with, or I just didn't make the connection because I saw on her Instagram, she posted, I think she had posted it. Um, I can't remember, but it was a, a picture of the Taylor Swift album cover and then a pair of socks knit with this. And it was so spot on to the shirt that Taylor Swift is wearing on the cover of this album um, that I, it was like, oh, okay, I get the 1989 reference. But yeah, so here's this. How pretty is that? I mean, it's just a great color combo all around, but she knocked it out of the park in terms of accuracy. Love it. Something going on out there with the boys. You're, you're going to hear some child noises, I'm sure. So, got these. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I If I'm not knitting socks around the clock, then I don't know. I need to be giving some of these away in a giveaway or something. But I need to be knitting more socks. I'm finding that I'm loving wearing my hand-knit socks. I've been wearing them more and more frequently. I, when we went to San Francisco, it, you know, it was chilly, so I wear socks with my shoes. And I was wearing my hand knit socks and occasionally they peek out from under my jeans. I, I don't know. What is this picture I'm painting here? But I love, I love it. And I want to, I want to knit more socks. So there you go, guys. Some fun self-striping or self-patterning yarns from Patton, Patton's Croy Sock Yarn Collection from Bella's Crafts on Amazon. You get a bunch of these. And then Tiny Human Knits. Check her out, guys. They're, she's fantastic. She's in Canada. So if you are in Canada... You know, it's, it's uh, what is it? Domestic shipping for you. But otherwise the shipping wasn't too bad. I purchased it on Etsy and it came pretty quickly and I'm very satisfied. But there you go, guys. If you need your sock yarn fix, hopefully that's satisfied. Yeah, love it. Ooh, love it. Okay, before I go, I have two special guests that want to share with you some progress that they have made. Um, little progress on some knitting. And that is my two boys, Angus and Ronan. I, if you watched or if you paid attention to my Instagram, you know that they wanted to express an interest in wanting to learn how to knit. And they have their own, come on over here, let me move my chair out of the way. They have their own little knitting baskets here. Yeah, here, you know what, instead of me moving this chair, why don't you sit in this chair? Step back a second. Here, why don't you show them, go ahead. Am I shaking in the screen? This yarn I like because it's my favorite color and I did very good on it. And it's, I'm making a scarf, but I'm not done with it. You're not done with it yet. Show your needles. Show those needles. 
Okay. And now let's show your scarf. Can you hold it up so they can see it? Right like that? Yeah. Watch the microphone. Hide your face so it doesn't try to focus on your face. <laughs> and this is a little blanket for my teddy bear. And for this yarn, you need really thin needles because it's very small. Show, hold it up so they can see it. It's just a little bit, a little bit of work there. I have done like three rows, I think. Yeah. Okay, I really like it. Did you pull your needle out? Here. Yeah. Hey, good job. Look at you getting your stitches back on the needle. Learning how to fix mistakes like that or little things like that is really important, but that happens even to mommy. Here, I'll be. I'll be right back. I'm getting another one. Okay, while you're doing that, I'm going to have Angus show his, okay? Okay. Go tell Angus he can come in and show his now. That's okay. Hi, my name is Angus, and I um, brought my yarn. It looks like this. Um, it's rainbow. It changes very quickly, and and then I've not done too much progress. This is what I've been doing. Yeah, but you had more than that. Remember we we started with that red yarn and you had a lot of the red yarn. So this is just because you got new yarn. Um, it's a, it's four. The needle size is US8. 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 Show them the label on the front, the brand. Turn that so they can see And then the it. brand is Big Twist. I'm gonna knit free stitches. Perfect. So we, I shared this on um, Instagram, but then a member of Patreon mentioned to me in a chat that she learned using, make sure you're working yarns in the front, that she learned using this nursery rhyme, shared the nursery rhyme with me, and I thought it was fantastic. So how does it go? In through the front door, once around the back, peek through the window, off pops Jack. Nice job. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. I'm not exactly sure what what transpired there. Bye. Hiya. Okay. See you later, bud. Thanks for sharing your knitting, bud. And there they go, just like that, they are gone, but they have had some experience knitting. They're doing really well. I have one of them still sitting over here watching me. Um, my little audience member poking his head up over here, but I'm so excited that they expressed an interest in learning how to knit and that they were so good about allowing me to teach them how to knit. It's not the easiest thing to do. It's not the easiest thing to teach. Um, it, it requires an immense amount of patience that I don't always have, but they did such a great job learning and listening and they picked it up really quickly. I'm not terribly surprised, but I'm, I'm very pleased that they picked it up so quickly. Don't watch out for that candle, baby. That can be treacherous. That is it for me today, guys. I wanted to share all these fun things with you um, just to let you know what I've been up to. It's always such a pleasure being here with you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join me. As always, it means a great deal to me. If you took value from today's video or enjoyed yourself at any point, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe and click the bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload new content, which is every Wednesday and every Sunday with the occasional video sprinkled in. And also, if you would like to help support the work that I'm doing here at the Wool Needles Hands channel, definitely check out the Patreon. There's lots of bonus content over there. And we just launched the KT Cal, where we are all working together to work our way through an improvised top-down sweater based on the character Aaron Templer blog series. So head over there, check it out, see if it's for you. And if you decide to stick around and support the channel, it means such a great deal to me. Thank you so much in advance. Until we meet again for next week's episode of the Midweek Ramble, as well as an episode of Ravelry Roulette, which is coming out on Monday. Happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye! Bye.